everyone. Praise God. Psalms 27 and verse 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after, that's my heart, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord. Indeed, God is good. Praise God, and I thank him for his love, his grace, and his mercy. And tonight I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to know how thankful I am to be a part of your life, to be a part of your ministry. Praise God, and I pray God's blessings upon your lives. Praise God. You may have your seats. Greetings to my pastor, my husband, Bishop Sobran, God bless you. Greetings to the visionary of this event, Pastor Miller, wonderful woman of God, our spiritual mother, and a woman of wisdom, a virtuous woman. Thank you, Pastor Miller, for entrusting this pulpit to me this evening. And I, as I was telling her today, you know, I am not a preacher, praise God, but I love the Lord, praise God. And tonight, I, I just want to encourage you and motivate you in the Lord, praise God, because he is good. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And... Um, the topic for this evening that was given to me is a valiant spirit. A valiant spirit. Praise God. What does it mean to be a person of a valiant spirit? It is acting with bravery. It's acting with boldness, with courage regardless of the situation. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And the opposite of that is to be what? Fearful, very timid. A lot, a lot of people say, man, you don't have a backbone. You cannot stand up, right? So that's all the opposite of having a valiant spirit. And the word of God has numerous examples of men and women of God whose lives demonstrated that of a valiant spirit. And we have people like Esther who stood up and say, if I perish, I perish. Praise God. We have people like David who stood strong, hallelujah. And he just says, you know what? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I know God is with me. I know I have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Now, why should we, and you know, there are so many other examples of men and women in the word of God whose life demonstrate that of having a valiant spirit. Now, why should we seek to have a valiant spirit? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that tells me the force is powerful. And on our own, we can do nothing. We will be defeated. Amen? So we need that spirit of God. We need to, we need that valiant spirit that we can stand strong, that we can stand tough, 
that we can stand tall. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight I just thank God for who he is. Not only to me, but to all of us tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight I would like to look at four ways. And I know that there are others. But I would like to look at four ways by which we can develop that valiant spirit. And the first one is... The, first, the valiant spirit is promoted through one's understanding of their position in God, number one. The second one is a valiant spirit is promoted through one's personal experience in their daily walk with God. The third one, a valiant spirit is promoted through one's belief total trust in God. And the fourth one, a valiant spirit is promoted through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you pray with me at this time? Father, we worship you. Father, we lift you up. Father, we glorify your name. Your name which is above every name. Your name at which every knee shall bow and tongue confess that you are Lord of Lords and that you are King of Kings. Father, we thank you for this time where, God, we can look into your holy word. Father, let your word be unto us as a lamp, unto our feet and a light onto our path. Father, we pray that your word will teach us, your word will guide us, your word will empower us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that we can stand strong, that we can stand tall, oh God, that we can lift our hands, oh God, say what a mighty God we serve because we are nothing God without you. Thank you for this time. Oh God be with us. Speak to us dear Father. Bless my life. I surrender it to you God. In the name of Jesus we give you thanks. We give you praise God. We lift in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first point. A valiant spirit is promoted through one's understanding of their position in God. And I would like us to look at Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 4 to 3, verses 1 to 3. And let us look at Isaiah. First of all, Isaiah was a prophet from Judah. And as you may know, that Israel was divided into two kingdoms, right? The northern kingdom, and we had the southern kingdom. Now, the capital of the northern kingdom was Samaria. Now, the northern kingdom was Israel, and the capital of Israel was Samaria, right? And the southern kingdom was Judah, and the capital being Jerusalem. I have to be careful how I'm talking because we have the, the Bible school professor here. So I, I have to be very careful, right? So we have these two kingdoms, the north and the south. And God's people, they were going through a very, very difficult time. And God saw their heart. He saw their fear. And he sent a special message. He raised up Isaiah to go and speak to his people to encourage their heart. Isn't that wonderful? To, to have a special message delivered. 
praise God from God. And I know that this message that was delivered to the people of God is also for you and I today. Amen. 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 So let us look at Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. This, this great message from God to God's people. He's, it says, but now, thus saith the Lord, but, but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that formed thee, O Israel. Look at the other two words. Fear not. I don't know who that word is for tonight. Fear not. For I have redeemed. I have called you, or I have called thee by me. You are mine. Praise God. And he went on to say, when you go through the waters, I, God, will be with you. When you go through the river, they shall not overflow you. When you go through the fire, you shall not be born, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Amen? For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba. Praise God. During this time, in the life of the Israelites, which now we're talking about the northern part of Israel, right? They, they, their enemies, the Assyrians, came and attacked them and conquered their capital, which was Samaria, and took its residents into exile into Assyria. Now, just imagine, this is a very important part of Israel, the capital, right? Now, the residents who remained, they were very unsettled. They were very fearful, not knowing if their enemies will return for them next. When God saw them. God saw their fears, their anxieties, their worries. God sees us. He knows us. He knows where we are. He knows our struggles. And I like the approach that he made when he was sending his message to his people. He reminded them of their relationship. This is who I am to you. And this is who you are to me. He said, fear not. And he presented to the two greatest challenges of life, which is fire and water. When fire and water go out of control, we as human beings, have, you know, we have no control of it, but God, but God. And he presented those two powerful experiences that create big trouble in people's life. He said, when you go through those challenges of life, those challenges that make you feel as though you cannot get up, you cannot stand up. You're going to be conquered. You're going to be defeated. It's a fear not. Fear not. Know your position in me. I am the one who is taking care of you. I am responsible for you. I created you. Fear not. Brethren, regardless of what life presents to us, 
us, regardless of what life may present, God wants us to trust Him. Amen. God wants us to stay in Him. Yes. God wants us to, to, to know our position in Him. Amen? Praise God. And I love David, the man after God's own heart. He knew his position in God. When we look at his life, look at, at Psalms 27 and verse 1. This is somebody who knew God. Somebody who had a relationship with God. And that is what God wants from us. That is what he, he is desiring from us. David says, the Lord, he is my light. He is my son. Look, look at those Possessive pronouns. The Lord he is my light. He is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord, He is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I know who I am. I know my position in God, and I'm not going to worry. I'm going to trust Him regardless. And we can see that. That boldness, that tenacity, that courage that he had because he knew his position in God. And we can see that in 4 Samuel chapter 17. You know, when he went to, when David was a young boy and he went to visit his brothers while they were preparing for battle, you know. And as he, he got there, he heard Goliath threatening. And he was like, who is this person? Who is this person who is threatening the army of the living God? Oh, do, don't we have somebody who can stand up against him and fight him? There's only somebody who has full confidence in God can say that. Because Goliath was a giant. He was a little lad. He said, you know, so um, someone heard, they went to Saul. He said, this is, there is a young man by the name of David who said he can defeat Goliath. So they brought David before Saul. And Saul said, you know, are you able? You're just a boy. He said, oh king, I am a shepherd. But when I'm in the, my, when I'm in the field tending my sheep, many times the bear and the lion will come to devour my lamb. And I would go after them. And I will deliver my lamb from that lion and from the bear. And he says, there are times when the lion and the bear will try to rise up against me. But God, by the strength of God, I just grip them and I tear them apart. And he said, Goliath, this giant, this only foul Philistine will be like one of them. What confidence. Be he could have spoken like that because he knew his position in God. And that is what God is looking for from us. To know and to take our position in him. Praise God. David's courage, his boldness, his tenacity did not come from his strength. It, not, it did not come because he had such great self-esteem. It came because he depended on God. It came because he knew who he was in God. That was his strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. And David took on that challenge. 
So could you imagine this young lad knowing who he was in God as he approached the Philistine, he took his position. He took his position, he took his focus. When you are going to fight a battle, know your position, take your focus. Amen. 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 I believe as he took his position, as he took his focus, regardless of the threat of the enemy, when, when Goliath said, am I a dog? Why are you coming to me like this? You understand? He said, today, look, look at the difference of the different words that were spoken. The words Goliath spoke was in himself, of himself. Today, I am going to slay you and I give your, your, your body, your flesh, to the birds of the air and I give it, give, give it to the beast of the field. That's what I'm going to do to you. Come here. I, am, I Goliath, I'm going to do that. I believe as David approached, he had God with him, no one. He had the word of God in his mouth. I believe he was saying as he kept his position, as he kept his focus, he was saying the Lord is my light. He is my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. When you go to fight the enemy, you're not going on your own. You're going with the power of God. You're going with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, I will fear no evil. Because I know God is with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the more he kept his focus. And two, the, the thing is. When you are fighting a battle, you never do it alone, right? When you're in battle, there are many other behind the scenes giving guidance, giving instruction. And I believe David was talking to God. God, show me. God, direct me. Where should I hit this man? I know I have to take him down. That's all I know, but I need your guidance right now, Father. Open my eyes to see God. Hallelujah. And God directed him straight to the forehead. Straight to the forehead. God don't disappoint his children. Hallelujah. God will not disappoint us as children of God when we know our position and we take our position in Him. Amen. Praise God. And I believe a sniper, what anointing, came over David because that hole was so small. It's only those with sniper skills, sniper ability could have hit that bull's eye and caught him down on the ground. I know, you know, my daughter, she loves shooting thanks to her dad. And she is like a sniper shooter. She can, if somebody is holding you around the neck, she can show, shoot that person directly in the forehead without affecting the, 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 the next person, <laughs> you know? So um, I am saying all of that because focus is so important when we are fighting our battle. So many times the enemy tries to distract us. Amen? But keep your focus. Don't, don't, don't be distracted by the words. Don't be distracted by the signs. Don't be distracted at all. Praise God. Praise God. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. There are so many giants out there to fight. There are so many giants that need what? Taking down. Right? Praise God. When we look around us, we have the giants of drugs that are just, they're destroying or especially our youths. Our young people are being destroyed. Yes. Oh, it's time for us to stand up and God, ask God to open your eyes, to take down that giant. So many times we complain about our young people, but what are we doing to help them? They're in trouble. We have another, uh, this afternoon when we were at the airport, I could have heard them calling out and say, if you see something, do something. And they were talking about human trafficking. You know, if you say something, do something. That's another giant, human trafficking. Sex trafficking. Oh God, there is so much to do. There is so much to pray about. There is so much to rise up against. In Jesus' name, now it's not the time for us to become complacent. Praise God. When we look at um, homosexuality and how they are trying to, to um, make it what? A normal part of living. And look what they are doing to our kids. They are bringing it into, um, in cartoons. And, you know, I work in the school system. And we have these little girls and little boys who are trying to hug and kiss each other. Oh my God. The enemy is coming. They came into our school. They are coming into our homes. It is time. It is time for us to rise up and take our position. Rise up as a man of God. Rise up as a woman of God. Rise up as a parent and take your position as God. Lord, show me Show me, God, how I can take down this enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Oh, God, may God help us May God bring us from that seat of complacency and stir our hearts to make a difference. Hallelujah. Our young people are crying. Hallelujah. They are crying. May God stir our hearts. May God stir our hearts to do something and stop. You know, Criticizing and stop commenting and become active in killing that child. Praise God. So knowing our position in God empowers. It makes us bold. It makes us brave. It makes us courageous. Could you imagine David saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation? No, the Lord, he is my light. He is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. Oh, God. God is depending on you and I to make a difference. Praise the Lord. Secondly, a valiant spirit is promoted through one's personal experience in their daily walk. 
with God. Praise the Lord. In Revelation, one second, please. Praise. Sing as though my good will just stay. So a valiant spirit is promoted through one's personal experience in their walk with God, reflecting on and rehearsing about the goodness and greatness of God promotes confidence. It promotes confidence in God. Revelation 12 and 11 says, they overcame him. Who is that him? The devil. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. It is so important to reflect on God, to reflect on what he is doing in our lives. The more we think about him, the more we, we, we think about his goodness, his grace, his, if it was not for him on our side, where could we be today? And I think, I, like, I really do like David because I believe that Psalms 23 was a quiet time in David's life as he reflected on God as he reflected on his life. And I would like us to repeat that psalm together, Psalm 23. And as we do that, look at the courage. Look at the, the boldness that he is feeling. Look at the tenacity. That valiant spirit that he is experiencing as he meditated and as he reflected on the goodness of God. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff is there to comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup and oil. Surely good and sinners Praise God. I believe as David reflected on God, as he reflected on the goodness of God, he remembered the time probably as he was grazing his sheep, he probably didn't know where to take them next. But the Holy Spirit led him to green pastures. And not only to green pastures, but to still waters. Because sheep cannot drink from flowing water. Maybe he reflected a time when he was running from Saul and he ran into the enemy's camp. Can you remember his, his experience with Abimelech? You know, and the people say, hey, isn't this David who the king wanted such a long time? And when Abimelech came, what did he do? He just started spitting on himself as though he is a madman. He said, 
why you brought me to see this madman? Get out. You understand me? There is where he wrote Psalms 34. Come, let's magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe he reflected on the time when, you know, he lost it. And he did something that was not right. You remember the, day, the problem with him and Uriah and Uriah's wife. And there Nathan, Nathan came, corrected him. There he says, you lead at me in the paths of righteousness. Praise God. And the more he thought about God, the more he felt stronger and stronger and more confident in this God who he, whom he was serving. And he said, you know what? I'm going to stay right here all the days of my life. Praise God. Hallelujah. And surely goodness and mercy will follow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. So a valiant spirit is also promoted through your personal experience with God. And I know that many of you do have testimonies of the greatness of God. That's why you could say, if it was not for the Lord on my side, I could not here. I, I heard our pastor here saying, you know, ref, reflecting on her story. If it was not for God, I couldn't be your pastor tonight. Thank him for his grace and his mercy. So many times, just take time out. I know there are so many troubles all around us, but spend time in just meditating on the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 and 8 says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are of a good report, think on these things. Praise the Lord. Our third point is, a valiant spirit is promoted through one's total trust when yielding to God. And Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. We have the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. When King Nebuchadnezzar made that big golden image and made the command that everyone should bow down and worship that golden image which he did set up. And news went to, to Nebuchadnezzar that there were three Hebrew boys who never did kneel. So he commanded that they be brought before him and he said, is it true? Yes, King. He says, okay, I'm going to play this music one more time. And when you hear it, you need to bow down and worship that golden image which I, Nebuchadnezzar, did set up. And if you don't, you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they were like, okay. We're not going to bow. But one thing we know, I, we want you to know, O King, that the God whom we serve, he is able to deliver us out of that burning, fiery furnace and out of your hand, O King. But if he doesn't, we still want you to know, King, that we will not worship your God, nor bow down 
to that golden image which you have set up. They made a total commitment. They trusted in this God. Praise the Lord. And at their words, King Nebuchadnezzar became angrier and he commanded that the furnace that he had burning there be heated seven more times hotter and he commanded they said the great the mighty men to bind these three young men and to just throw them in which they did and the word of God says as these great and mighty men took up these men of God, the young men of God, and threw them into that fiery furnace, they dropped dead. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell into that furnace. And when Nebuchadnezzar came back to see what was happening, he said, hey, didn't he put three men into that furnace? Why am I seeing Four, and the fourth seemed to be like the Son of God. How do you know Son of God? Mm. Praise God. I tell you, but when you stand for what you believe, when you honor God, God honors you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And so Nebuchadnezzar called them out and they examined them and they said not even a, a hair on their head was singed, nor was there any smell of smoke on their body. But guess what? My pastor, Bishop Sobrian, always says, he said the three of them came out, but the fourth is still in the fire. So when we are also confronted with the fire, we will not be burned. Praise God, because the fort is still there to save us. Praise God, and I'm reminded of the promise in Isaiah 43 and verse 2. When you walk through the waters, I will be with you. You. When you go through the river, they will not overflow you. When you go through the fire, you will not. Oh my God. But it comes with total trust in Almighty God. That is why someone says, trust the Lord with all. With all and lean not onto your own understanding. It must be a complete, true commitment, yes. not a partial. It should be partial, total, total. And look at the outcome of this. Nebuchadnezzar himself proclaimed, he said, if anybody here in Babylon speak against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be cut into pieces and their home shall become a town hill. Yeah. Brethren, God is real. God is real. Putting words, putting his word into action is so important. Knowing the word is good, right? Right, pastors? Knowing the word is good, but it is so important to live the word. Praise God. Walk the word. Talk the word. Reflect the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only then can we demonstrate a valiant spirit. Praise God. Take your position in God. We encourage as you meditate on your experiences with God. Put your total trust in Him. Praise God. And lastly, a valiant spirit is promoted through the empowering 
of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. What a wonderful day. Time to, and time to speak about the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 and 8 says, and you shall receive after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses everywhere hallelujah it's not easy to be a witness it's not easy to, to represent God without the power of God that is why Jesus before he left he encouraged his people in Jerusalem for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And in Acts, in Acts chapter 2, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Pastor mentioned it earlier, they were all in one accord, in one place. And there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the place where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them tongues of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Praise God. And the word of God says that this experience it was noised abroad and the people of Jerusalem came to experience or came to see what was happening. Praise God. Many of them were amazed the word of God said. They were amazed to hear these um, Galileans speaking in their tongue. They were like, what is happening here? Others were mocking, saying, oh, they're just drunk. But let me show you what the Holy Spirit does. And it says that Peter, under the anointing of God, he stood up. And he spoke, and he said, men, people of God, people, this is not what you're supposed to be happening. You, you're saying that these folks, they are drunk. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, that the Spirit of God, will be poured out on all flesh that your sons and your daughters will prophesy your young men will will see visions and your old men shall dream dreams on your servants and on my maid servants will i pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy Praise God. And he ministered and he continued to say what the Lord was going to do about the signs and the wonders that will, will occur. And after he was finished with his presentation, many came and said, what shall we do? What shall we do? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The word of God says that day, 3,000 accepted God and became a part of the family of God. You know, as they ministered, people were added daily. Praise God. This was the same Peter who could not act that he was a follower of Christ. This was the same Peter who began to, to swear, who began to curse because somebody said, you speak like a Galilean. He said, no, mm -hmm. not me. 
So I assure you, I'm not one of these folks. You know? But the Spirit of God, Pentecost made a difference yeah. in his life. Yeah. He experienced such transformation that he was no more afraid. He was so courageous. He was fearless. He was a fearless missionary for Christ after Pentecost. Mm -hmm. His life was totally transformed. Praise God. God. And I know today that some of you are feeling the call of God on your life to make a difference in this world, in, in, within your nation. But you are saying, mm, I don't know if I really, but you're feeling that tug. The Holy Spirit is here tonight to empower you, to fill you with that boldness, that confidence to say that the God I serve is a living God. To proclaim for God so loved the world that he gave his only God to That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise God. God wants us spirit as we represent him and tonight we looked at four ways by which we could gain that valiant spirit the first by knowing your relationship with God who he is to you and who you are to him and finding your position in him praise God the second one is by rehearsing his goodness, your personal experiences with him. The more you think about him, the more you think about his goodness, his grace, it empowers. Amen. Praise God. The third one is, is promoted through total trust, total confidence. Hallelujah. As you yield yourself to him. And the fourth is through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, if you are seeking this valiant spirit, God is here and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Tonight is a good night to seek a new infilling of the Holy Spirit or an, or an infilling of the Holy Spirit because that's the force that will empower how are you to stand strong, to stand tall, to stand in confidence? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. If that is your desire, can we just talk to the Lord for a little moment? Let him know your heart. Let him know, you know, where you are now hallelujah and if you need to reposition yourself in him just do just that amen praise god hallelujah if you need to trust him with all your heart so lord you you know i love you but there are times i don't feel you but even though I, at times I may not feel you. I still want to stay in you, God. I still want to trust you with all my heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we speak to the Lord for a little while? Let him know your heart. Let him know your heart's desire. Let him know your heart's cry. Hallelujah.